Hi everyone, how are you? Happy Thursday. You guys have almost made it through another week and you're here live on the Dixieville Paint Facebook page with Brush by Brandy. Um, my name is Brandy and I'm a Dixieville Paint brand ambassador and I paint with you guys live here on the Dixieville Paint every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. And tonight I'm here, we're in the month of December, we have a lot of fun things going on and um, all the holiday inspired options are so much fun with Dixie Belle paint and the redesign with Prima products and um, there's all kinds of cute stuff coming out right now. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit first about the holidays. Now my kids are not out here right now but if you guys are parents then you know that the holidays are all about thinking of ways to surprise your kids and create the magic for them so and buy me presents and buy i did buy sean presents today he doesn't know that part yet go by now he's stressing out all of a sudden you just got this worried look on his face because sorry now, everyone when the camera gets set down in the air <laughs> my feet running yeah. over to the car to see what i got <laughs> oh because sean knows all my hiding spots that's why um actually he's got this look of panic on his face because now he knows he has to buy me something yeah um, that wasn't funny. So here in Sacramento, um, I'm in Sacramento, California, and the railway here in Sacramento does something called the Polar Express, and the Polar Express is a Christmas story. And what it is is you go, you take your kids and you go ride the train. Everybody dresses in their pajamas, and they have actors that go up and down the aisles of the train singing, and they serve hot chocolate, and you drive to Santa's workshop in the train. Um, which is just seeing a display out the window. Um, but we did it with our kids when they were young and they had a lot of fun. So this is the story, the Polar Express. And one of the things in here is that they give out the first gift of Christmas. And since we're getting close to Christmas, I thought this was so relevant. But um, if you guys don't know what the first gift of Christmas is, is the little boy requests one of the bells from Santa's sleigh. And so um, one thing that we've done for our kids is um, this is just a bell that I got at the dollar store today. And I'm going to cut this little sprig of leaves off because it's going to be in my way. But I'm going to paint this because right now it looks so brand new. But um, this is a good thing for Elf on the Shelf to bring your kids is the, the first bell or the first gift of Christmas, a bell from one of the reindeer sleigh. And all I do is I take just a regular, you know, dollar store bell. And then, because it looks so brand new, we're gonna patina this bell. I'm gonna rust it out and make it look old like it would have weathered on one of the reindeer from Santa's sleigh. So Dixie Bell patina paint. Are you kidding me? Did I not bring out iron? No. Oh, yeah. oh I did, sorry. <laughs> I'm tired today, guys. I ran errands today. One of them was going to the dollar store to buy this bell. Um, so I'm going to take this and Dixieville Patina Paint comes in three colors. It comes in iron, copper, and bronze. And we're going to do a couple projects tonight. Number one, I'm going to do my bell and hopefully we'll be able to see by the end what it looks like. And then I'm going to work on this piece here behind me and I'll explain this finish to you in just a minute. Um, so to get started on this, number one, I'm painting a bell. And when you're painting metal, um, Dixieville has a product called Prime Start. And what Prime Start does under the patinas, so the patina paints actually have metal in the paint, and then you add a corrosive spray over the top that corrodes that metal in the paint. So if you don't protect metal underneath that paint, it will corrode through to the metal underneath your paint. Now, I'm gonna be doing a dollar store bell right here. So I don't really care if the corrosion process continues through to my bell. Um, and it ends up rusting out. Hopefully that won't happen until my kids are adults and we don't have to do this anymore. Okay, so wait a minute. Is this my present? <laughs> yeah. The one you don't care about? But if you are painting on metal, you want to use Prime Start before you put the patinas over the top of metal. And this just creates a barrier in between the metal and the patina paint. So you start with Prime Start. I'm going to go ahead and skip that step only because of what I'm painting. Um... And I'm gonna move straight to my iron patina paint. Oh, okay, I hear a child coming, so don't talk about what this is for. You can also use one of the regular Dixie Belle paints underneath your patina paint, um, and that just helps give better coverage. I don't know how this is gonna cover on top of this metal bell, 
but I'm just gonna kind of dab it on. And your first coat is just a coat to get coverage. So I'm just kind of stippling it on because I want it to look like kind of old and worn and rusted. So this is just the patina paint. Now had I put a coat of Dixie Belle Gravel Road underneath this, that would be a, a ideal. To, I would get better coverage with my patina paint. This is just a little quick craft project before I continue on to my much bigger furniture piece with the patina paint. And I'll explain to you how to do that too. Try not to stick my fingers all in it. Um, so I know Dixie Belle is doing giveaways for the 12 days of Christmas on their page. And then Redesign with Prima has 12 days of Christmas going on for uh, making Christmas ornaments. All kind, all the good, pro all the good cute projects are this time of year. Okay, so your first coat of patina paint, you're just gonna let it dry. You don't do anything. So I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna revisit this bell a couple times during my live tonight. So I'm just gonna set this aside. I have pretty good coverage where I think when I come back to my second coat, I'll be able to, um, to kind of cover this bell, even though we're still seeing some of the white show through. And that's okay to see the metal underneath because I want it to look like it's just decayed. And with, with regular decay, you would see the metal underneath too. You could also mix the patina paints. So for example, I have out some copper and bronze and I'm gonna add some copper to my bell. I just think it would be pretty. When you um, add the corrosive spray to the copper patina paint, it turns the colors of verdigris copper, those rich greens and blues that are in weathered copper. Um, so I think patinas can be really fun for holiday projects. So let me show you guys this. When you first open patina paint, sometimes it can have this skin over the top. And this is just because I've been storing this container. But if I remove this skin, it's actually protected my paint underneath. So I can just remove this skin that's formed over the top. And there my paint is nice and rich and new underneath. So don't worry if you open your container and you've got that just that skin that formed over the top of it, your paint is still totally usable underneath. I don't know why I'm trying to stay clean tonight. Sometimes I like having hands that are not totally covered in paint. And then when I go out, I just look like I'm <laughs> disgusting. So I'm That's why I really don't take you out of the house when your hands are I'm bad. just gonna hit this with some copper kind of in random places. So when you, um, when you weather iron, iron turns to rust. When iron weathers, it turns to rust. And then when you weather copper, it turns to verdigris copper. So we're gonna get the nice oranges in here along with the contrast of the copper. So I've, I just kind of splashed them on around my bell and I'm gonna set this aside. And we're gonna come back and our next coat is gonna be pretty much a repeat of what we just did. Oh, Claudia, don't I wish. She says, after seeing my beautiful entrance or the entryway, that you're gonna give me the day off for Christmas. No, no. I got a solid month. I gotta uh, honestly he's gotta crank it out for a solid month because the reason that what I didn't tell you guys on that post was um so we just built our house this last year and um and our permits come up in January. So we have to close out some permits, which means we have to wrap up a bunch of little projects that we have and finishing the tile in our entryway was one of them. Um so let's talk about this piece here and you guys see this piece but when I'm done with it you're not even going to recognize that it's the same piece that I have right here because what you see is a base of browns but this is going to we're going to corrode this and it's going to turn into rich shades of blue and um, this is bronze patina paint which is probably my favorite my favorite combination is the bronze patina paint with the blue spray those are I mean, the, the color that it corrodes to is just this beautiful, rich blue. So what I've got starting up here is, um, I don't know if you guys remember, before the Moonshine Metallics came out by Dixie Bell, they had their old line of metallics. And these weren't quite as rich. They are a little bit thinner. But this was the silver. And you guys see how white this silver is? So I actually have a bunch of this, and I'm going to paint with it tonight. Um, but this is a great way to use the old Dixie Bell metallic silver. It's a really white silver. 
Um, another way to get this color, you can tint the Moonshine Metallics, so Silver Bullet is the new silver, and you could tint it with a little bit of cotton, which I've done before, and it just lightens up that silver and you get this really pretty pearlescent uh, metallic color. So I'm using that, and then I'm using um, Dixie Belle Moonshine Metallics in Steel Magnolia, and I poured them into little dishes here. And then, of course, I have my bronze patina paint. I have two containers of it out because this one's almost empty. In fact, I don't even know if it's good. If I can get it open. It used to drive rock hard. Okay, I got it open. Okay, yeah, we can use that. So you can mix the, the patinas with the regular paint line. They're all compatible together and it creates some really cool looks and that's kind of what I'm gonna to do tonight. I'm gonna to focus on this middle section here, but my entire buffet, except for the top, which is a wood stained top, my entire buffet has the same look all over it. Um, and I've done this look before and it comes out just moody and dramatic and beautiful. Um, so I'm gonna start at the top tonight and I'm gonna start with my um, old Dixieville Silver Metallic. It's not the new Moonshine Metallic, it's the old Dixieville Silver Metallic. A lot of retailers may still have some of this in stock. The Moonshine Metallics just came out this last summer and this was the silver that was available before those came out. So I'm gonna move more into the center since I'm focusing on this area of my buffet. And I kinda of wanna look at it. By the way, this is for my own house, you guys, so I really don't wanna mess this one up. Um, now the patina is one thing about them is because it's a natural corrosive product, it can kind of have a life of its own. So you've got to be patient with them. And sometimes you'll get the look that you want first time around. And sometimes I end up having to come back and touch up little spots because you can't always control how they corrode. Did you get the right color where you wanted to? And so I'll just come back and touch up small areas. So with this silver, all I'm doing is I'm doing my brush in a cross hatching motion. And this takes the silver paint and gives it this brushed metal finish. Because metallics catch the light, it sees everywhere that you've changed your brush stroke and kind of makes that a feature. And I try to make it look accidentally on purpose where, um, you know, I make sure that they're going every which way. And of course it's totally random, but I did it on purpose until I liked, you know, it's catching the light this way here and then it's even across the piece. Um, with my next brush, I'm gonna take and brush in a little bit of my Moonshine Metallics in um, Steel Magnolia. Same thing, I'm using that same cross hatching. That's gonna be the theme throughout this whole piece. And I'm gonna brush it up here into this silver. They're gonna overlap just with that same kind of sloppy cross hatching motion. Super easy brush stroke, but really gives you um, texture and movement as a feature. Usually we're trying to smooth our pieces out and get no brush strokes, but this is one where you don't have to worry about that. So I just want a little bit of this um, steel magnolia in here. And by putting it up here into the silver, it just darkens this bottom area a little bit so it looks like it's gradating into the darker paint color. So what this is gonna do is by mixing the uh, metallics and the patina, I'm gonna get the old, worn, crusty look of patinas, but with a little bit of a new shiny look of the metallics. So it just gives you like that old versus new, the shiny versus, you know, good versus evil. I'm kidding, it's all good, but um, my house is kind of a, has kind of a modern farmhouse feel, a little bit industrial. Um, so I really kind of like this look. So what colors did you use for the base? So the let's see, what did I put on the base? Underneath this paint, let me remember guys, I have, I did a base of the regular Dixie Dell paints. What colors did I put on it? Oh, no, I didn't. I'm sorry. You know why? Because this piece was an already painted piece. 
this piece has already been, had already been painted. I've had this in my house for a long time and it's been painted a couple times. So that brings me to another topic. I had waxed this piece because the last time I finished it was a couple years ago and I used to wax everything. And I waxed it with the non Dixie Bell brand which I will not mention which one it was. It's not probably not the one you're thinking, by the way. Rhymes with? No. no I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, not going to happen. Um, you know why, you guys? You know why I won't say anything about another brand is because I don't think that there is any bad brand out there. I think every brand has its pluses and minuses, <laughs> and you just have to figure out what they are and then which what works best with your painting style. I don't think there's any brand that... Um, is bad and so I don't ever like to put out bad things about another brand um, so I'm just gonna call this other brand but it was an oil-based wax and so I had to remove all the wax from this piece before I could paint it um, yes it had cured but when I went to paint over it because it was an oil-based wax and it was thick my my paint beat it up um, so that told me that I needed to remove it. It was a resist. It, they, it, my paint was not going to bond to that wax. So I came back, Sean helped me, and we stripped it all back with mineral spirits, and then I cleaned it really well with Dixie Bell White Lightning. Um, so this has a base of paint on it. It was a gray buffet before I'm, um, before I'm adding these metallics and um, the patina paint. So if you were doing one from scratch, I would put a base of Dixie Belle paint on. And I usually try to put my base in a similar color to whatever I'm putting over top of it. The um, patina paints get pretty good coverage, except for the iron is a little bit thinner, but copper and bronze get really good coverage. Um, you can use these paints on their own without even corroding them. So if you just wanted a bronze buffet, this is a beautiful color. It's a rich, dark bronze metallic. And you can actually paint with this and not corrode it and just have a bronze metallic. Um, so under this, I would put probably up top like a drop cloth or sandbar. And then down below, I would have used a darker color, probably like in the gravel road or maybe even coffee bean range somewhere in there, I would have put under these if my buffet was not already painted, but this one was. So now I'm gonna take my Dixie Belle Patina paint and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna blend it right up into these, but I wanna make sure that I'm brushing my Patina paint up into this metallic. And, and I wanna do the same thing where it's gonna get a little bit thinner as I go up into that metallic. I'm gonna come back and brush it in with the brush from my, my metallic in just a minute. The reason I want to do that is because these brush strokes up here will get, they will corrode. Even though they're mixed in with that metallic paint, I will still get spots of corrosion. So it'll look like my corrosion kind of um, fades as it's going up. And it's really, really pretty. So you can use the patinas in conjunction with all the regular paints. Um, I did not do the cross hatching motion on my base coat down here. I just did a regular straight, clean, smooth base coat. And now I'm going to come back. I'm painting with my drawers in because I'm on camera. Um, you guys know I've said every time I paint, I always take my drawers out. You don't want to paint your drawers shut. Um, this is a really thin coat of paint. Your second coat of the um, patinas doesn't have to be super thick. I've already got a solid base on there. I don't need it for coverage. I just wanna get some wet patina paint on there so that when that corrosion process starts happening, I've got fresh paint everywhere to, for it to react with. And then like I said, there will be spots on here that, you know, some spots I get more corrosion on, some I get less on, and I wanted it a little bit stronger. And I may have to come back and touch up spots of my patina paint and I totally do that um, because it's so natural like you don't really have a lot of control over what it looks like and where you just got to go with it and you can't speed the process up you got to be patient and wait for it to start happening um, I'm going to focus just on the center section here so that we can see the process start happening while I'm on camera tonight okay so I've got it cross hatched all over the front I'm going to come back up here 
with my metallic and brush this back in. I'll carry my metallics down a little bit further. I want to really make it look like they're integrated together. Um, let me get a mister bottle. My paint's getting a little bit sticky. It's drying and I don't want it to dry yet. Hang on, I'll be right back. I need a mister bottle. So I'm just going to give myself a little bit of water just so this paint moves. Okay, and I'm seeing a couple spots I don't like. I didn't get the patina up into the top very much over here, so I'm going to even that out. It was kind of bare over there. And as I get going up, I still want the patina to go up. I'm just going to use a softer hand with it. Does the bronze paint have an active time or can you apply the spray and add patina later? Um, no, you need to apply it while it's wet. So I did one coat and it, that's dry underneath. And then you want to apply the reactive spray while your paint is wet. So that's why I'm coming back over the dry paint that I already had on here, and we're going to apply our um, corrosive spray over the top of that. And I can come back and add spots to this if I feel like I wish I had more metallic in a spot or um, not enough. I'll, I'm going to have to let the, the patina react and then see how I like it, and I can come back and make changes to it. So now that I have wet paint all over this, it's new fresh paint, the um, corrosive spray comes in green and it comes in blue. And you're going to get a different look depending on whether you use green or blue. What this means is um, the color of the reaction is going to be different. So for example, with copper, you're going to get more green verdigris with the green spray. Excuse me, you're going to get more blue verdigris with the blue spray. You get more blue in the bronze with the blue spray. Um, I like that combination. That's the look I'm going for. Um, if you're using iron, which we'll do our iron bell in a few minutes, the green spray reacts better with the iron. Gives you more of those rich orange rust colors. Do you want to put that bell over here? It's still really wet. I can't do a lot with it. I might have to mm -hmm. put a heat gun on it. The heater's right here. Oh, I have my heat gun right there. Okay. Um, so one thing about these, when you get the patina spray, it comes in the bottle with a lid on it and the sprayer is separate. Um, when you're storing your patina spray, you don't want to store the sprayer in the bottle. So save that little black lid. When you're done using it for each, each time, um, flush your sprayer out and put that black lid back on top. The reason is because this corrosive spray will start corroding the inside of your sprayer and it will clog. Um, so I'm gonna warn you right now, I've had this sitting out, I used it the other day and I did not take my sprayer out. So I'm hoping that it sprays for me okay tonight. I think I'm gonna get lucky on this one. So you can turn it to a stream or you can turn it to a fine mist. I wanna mist my um, metallic. And I'm gonna go all the way up here. You can see where the blue is going because I want it to corrode that um, patina that I put into my metallic. And it's drippy, and I'm gonna show you in a second what I'm gonna do about the drips. Okay, I don't really want a drippy look. You can let your patina get as drippy as you want. I'm gonna brush the spray into my paint. And all I'm doing is coming back with that same cross hatching motion, and this is just integrating that spray into my paint going to get me really good coverage for my corrosion. So what's the dark brown color? The, the, dark, color? the dark brown is um, bronze patina paint by Dixie Bell. So patina paint, um, like I said in the beginning, is paint that actually has metal particles in it, in this case bronze, um, that once you add a corrosive spray, it will corrode the metal particles that are inside that paint. So I'm creating a bronze, patina bronze look using paint. But it, it gives you a really realistic look. And I'm realizing that I didn't get down here onto this lip on the front and my patina paint, or spray is going down there. 
So I'm going to dip into my paint. It's almost empty, so I'm not worried about getting the spray into there. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to mix that spray that's coming down into this area in with some paint. Okay, and I'm going to repeat all the same steps that I did when I first put this look together, only now I'm integrating that patina spray into my paint with brush strokes. I'm also focusing on any spots where it's getting really drippy because I don't want it dripping down the front. I want it to be that cross hatching pattern. So if it is having a tendency to drip anywhere, I'm cleaning it up. So the old silver metallic came in a base and a top coat. Did yeah. you use them on the book? On did um, you use both on the top? No, I didn't. This is this is the top coat. So I but I'm using it as a top coat. Um, the difference was that the um, the old base coat was for adherence, and then the top coat was more for appearance. And so this is an appearance coat right here. This is my final coat. So I'm not. I don't need to. Um, attach it to anything. I don't need it for coverage because I already had all that underneath. Um, so I use the top coat that's for the appearance. Same thing up into the metallics. I'm still using the brush from my bronze and I'm just cross hatching it into my metallic up here. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the brush from my metallics. Because I, I want to get rid of the blue spray marks that I have up here. I don't want, they will um, take your paint, I guess, a little bit blue if you don't clean them off. And I really don't want to, not really tint. Oh, can you guys see right here? Yeah, see that? Nice, yeah. That's the um, corrosion is starting to happen right there. That was fast. Yeah, and then this it. is the steel magnolia. I feel like I'm going to want a little bit more steel magnolia here. I kind of lost it. I got a little heavy handed with my bronze. I don't want to lose the little bit of shimmer of the metallic mixed in with the patina. Is it easy to clean your brushes out? Once yeah. Oh yeah. Out? Totally easy. Just like cleaning them for the regular paint. It's not hard at all to get this out. You'll notice I'm using my good Dixie Belle brushes with this with no hesitation whatsoever. Um, it cleans out just like using the regular paints. You just want to be careful because this really is a corrosive spray. So, <laughs> for example, um, we taught at a workshop for Dixie Bell. Where were we? Oh, the one in Ontario, California, just recently. And they had metal chairs in the hotel in the workshop. Yeah, and after a while, we realized, oh my gosh, we're spraying this corrosive spray, and there's metal chairs behind everyone. Like it's gonna be, it gets into the air. All right, pack them up. Let's go. Yeah, let's get so out. They covered the chairs <laughs> in plastic so that like the hotel wouldn't freak out that we were spraying corrosive spray all around the hotel or the conference room. So I'm gonna let this hang out for a minute, but you can see right here as this is starting to react. Can you guys see how my brush strokes reacted? That's going to give me this really streaky brush stroked corrosion effect. Um, while this is kind of hanging out, I'm just going to come over here and do this door too, because my bell is still too wet. So we'll just move over and I'm going to repeat the exact same process I did on the center over here. really nice orange pipe. Can you see it? <laughs> I keep trying to cut it out. Um, well, I said in the beginning, we built our house and this little opening in the wall over here, this is going to be, this is my workspace. That's going to be a second staging area for me eventually. But that's also our fire sprinkler system underneath my wall. So eventually I will have a second staging area. Right now I have a big hole in the wall for them to work on the fire sprinkler system. The electrician was just here this week. Sean loved him. <laughs> um, no comment. <laughs> Sean is the hardest guy in the world to tick off. Trust me, I try all the time. And he, like, 
this electrician was driving him nuts. I'm pretty sure this electrician does not watch my live, so I can talk about him. I can see how I'm getting the, the corrosion for the bronze. I use blue spray. It's turning br blue inside my metallics. Can you guys see that? Here's a and then look right up here. here where the yeah. metallics are mixed in with the patina, like that little brush stroke right there. How pretty is that? Can I see that? Mm -hmm. So this is one of my favorite looks. That's why this piece is being done for my own house. It's gonna go in my dining room. And my dining room is kind of gold, silver, um, very more modern compared to the rest of the house. A little more sleek. So I think this will be a cool look in there with, I have a big gold mirror that hangs over the top of it. The, it's, it's a gold mirror I use in my staging sometimes and it's just gaudy, over the top, like, bold gold mirror and I love it all right I got my metallics kind of done and now I'm going to come up down here and crisscross that bronze so you guys are seeing that this uh my patina is turning kind of white when I come back to this if I wipe that white off over the top it's just an efflorescence can you see that if I brush through it with my finger it's an efflorescence that forms over the top and it will wipe off. And then I can seal it, seal the um, finish that's underneath that. It's like, um, you know, if you leave like your wheelbarrow out in the yard and you go to touch it after it's rusted and you get that powder on your hands, um, it doesn't take the rust off just to take the powder off, but that powder forms over the top of it. And that's what that is. That's just a powder over the top of the See, this is a good transition because you see it were comparable because the center is much darker underneath now. The but you can, it's see, turning. you can see how basically it's not going to look anything like yeah. the paint that I'm putting on here. My finished look looks nothing like this. Okay, now I'm going to go with my blue spray. I spray it pretty liberally. And then I'm going to come brush it all in. Brushing it into the metallic. Because you see how the blue spray, and it will dry like that. It actually will make little blue spots, and I don't want that. I got a little bit over here under my center. Another thing you can do is um, these sprays have a little bit of vinegar in them. You can smell it. Um, you can use vinegar if you want a really drippy look, and you don't want to use just the spray. It's not going to corrode it as much but it'll help you get that really drippy look. Um, if you're using too much of these sprays, they do get into the air and you can aspirate them. So you can wear a, just a breathing mask when you're spraying it is a good idea. They're chemicals. You know, it's not gonna burn your skin or anything, but it doesn't taste good, I'll tell you that. Okay, so I'm gonna see how this does. I think I like it, but if there are spots that I don't like and I wanna come back and redo this drawer, it's just as simple as, you know, repeating the steps in another coat. I don't know if I'm gonna like this spot right here. It's a little, you know, let, let's see if I add a little bit more metallic in there. I'm sorry, not metallic, this is my um, patina. Cause I feel like that was a little heavy on the metallics. Like it didn't graduate into my patina very well. And this brush already had the spray on it, so I'm not going to spray that again. And I'm going to see how it does. And if I don't like an area, I will come back and just repeat this. You know, you can see it's a fairly simple step to repeat. I'm not worried about keeping it clean. I can be pretty messy with it. It goes pretty quickly. But I'm going to tell you what, the look of this is really, really cool. Okay. So let's let that hang out and react a little bit. I like, I'm gonna put a little bit more spray where I added that, because I don't see those colors coming out like I want. See, I can go over this, even after it's corroded, I can go over it with the paint again if I need to. There we 
There we go. That's what I needed. I needed the silver to be a little bit lighter. That, um, Steel Magnolia is a little darker than I want, and I want the contrast. Okay. Let's let this hang out. It can, you can get into the habit of wanting to overwork patina and you really have to be patient with it. So with each step of this, I would let this dry overnight before I came back to try to rework it because this patina will continue to change overnight even. I'm not sure why that one spot right there isn't changing. I'm gonna hope it catches up because again, like I just said, you have to just let it do its thing. It's gonna continue to change. It's not a five minute process, it's a five hour process. So don't try to rush it. Even putting a heat gun on it, it can actually um, slow down your reaction. I love this drawer up here. This is beautiful. I love this combination of the patina and the metallics in there together. So I love that so far. I wanna carry that down and then get into the solid metallics underneath. Let's come back and hang out with our valve for a few minutes. I'm going to hit this with a heat gun because my um, base coat is still really wet. And then I'll be able to come back and put a second coat on here and we can um, spray the bell. The iron does react a little bit faster than the other colors. So this is just the raw paint. I'm not trying to get it to corrode at all at this point. You wanna do your corrosive spray on your second coat of patinas. So now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do the same thing we did at the very beginning of the video. We added a base coat onto this bell. So I think it's gonna be cool because it's gonna have some spots that are thicker and some that are thinner. You can kind of see the white peeking through. And that just lets it be a little bit more authentic. So my kids will actually believe that this is a bell from, you know, Santa's sleigh. We talked in the beginning that um, in the story, The Polar Express, the boy requests for the first gift of Christmas. He requests one of the bells from Santa's sleigh. And so um, I give my kids one of the bells from Santa's sleigh is the first gift of Christmas. I know the things we do, right? anybody asking questions tonight? no there's no comments going on and i've checked the service and we're okay there is anybody freezing or didn't you tell me that? any issues you can see comments you've seen some mm -hmm. is anybody watching 187 people okay i guess everyone's just quiet two oh. <laughs> you and me <laughs> um i kind of wish you would have told me this like 40 <laughs> minutes ago The comments. Anybody, anybody, throw me a bone. Say something to Sean, you guys. Tell him he looks pretty today. <laughs> Tell him his pants make him look fat. Well, <laughs> it's not the pants. All right. The yeah, comments must not be coming through, because I'm sure there's somebody out there that would have made one of those nice comments. Said something. Yeah. What is Sheila. she doing? Why is she <laughs> ruining that piece? Okay, so this is my bell, and I kind of, I used a blotting motion, so my paint is really uneven, because I want this to be rusty, and um, the, this is iron patina paint with a little bit of copper, but the iron reacts really well with the green spray. So I used blue over here, I'm going to use the green spray on this. See how I told you, do you guys remember how I told you that if you leave this lid on your patina paint, it will corrode inside? When I spray this, it's spraying rust color. Clump, yeah. yeah, it's corroding inside my spray bottle because I left it out sitting out because I used these this week. Okay, so I'm gonna hit this with a heat gun and try to accelerate the response. Again, if I don't like it, I just paint over it again. I'll just put another layer of patina over the top. Yeah, people don't like me, they're not making comments. Can let me see. I can't turn the camera around because I can't, um, 
Rachel said, oh, that corrosion is beautiful. Was that a long time ago? Huh. Huh, okay. Well, they might show up on the replay. Oh, nope. don't, yeah, show don't, that, do that. don't show that piece behind me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you see that I wasn't paying attention? The metal from the bell heated up and it bubbled my paint. It's kind of cool. I want it to look old. Can you guys see the bubbles in there? I'm painting on metal and the heat heats the metal. Well, it's top quality metal. <laughs> yeah, hey, nothing but the best with the dollar store. I'm gonna hold it back a little bit more. Oh, good company. Oh, you know what? I didn't get spray on the bottom. Right? I kind of like the, just watching the paint bubble. So anyway, I don't think this is going to accelerate any. Just makes my bell yeah. really hot. So I'm going to let this kind of marinate and see what colors it comes out to. But this should end up being colors of rusty orange and, um, and the green from the copper that I added in. And then I'll put this little sprig that came on top of it. I can attach this back on top. It's got a little bow on it. And it looks a little bit more festive. But a little more authentic, has more character than just the white that it was before. So let's check back in with our, our patina over here. It's still corroding and I'm starting to see some response come into this area right here. If it doesn't work, I'll just paint in over it again and give myself another coat and see about it working. But I like this right here, it's really cool. It's a little bit drippy, but it's a little, it's got a little, I can see the brush strokes in it too. So we'll let this hang out. And um, when I'm done, I'll post pictures of it. So you guys will get to see the finished piece. For, uh, let's see, what are we, Thursday? Probably early next week on my page. A brush by Brandy. And I'm going to let you guys go and head out for Christmas. Um, you know, getting your Christmas projects ready. Um, I will be back next Thursday evening live here on the Dixie Bell page. If you guys enjoyed this, please go follow me at Brushed by Brandy. Um, otherwise, you guys, thank you for joining us. Happy Thursday. Um, I hope I see some comments and I'll go and respond to anything we missed um, in the replay. You guys have a great weekend.